All right. So the secret to all things in life is having no fear. Have no fear. So what that means is we must continue without fear. And it's been far too long since I've painted a painting. <laughs> it's weird with the camera right there and the screen up there, but we're going to paint a painting as long as I don't get my hair on the... <laughs> So, already liquid whited. Already did the liquid white up there. This is just from something I was playing around with. I was actually cleaning my brushes, and that was what came out of the brush during the cleaning process. Wow, this is oily here, as you can see how shiny that is. Phthalo blue, we're just going to. Maybe I can kind of show you here. Just kind of dab ourselves. Ooh, look at all that oil. Just pure oil, no paint. But we'll smear the paint out into that. That's super wet. We'll play with it. That's the key to this. No fear. You got to play with it. You gotta let it do what it wants to do. Take some phthalo blue. And this is super oily. I'm just gonna kind of tap it on each side to evenly distribute the paint. Distribute. I'm a paint distributor. <laughs> Whoopsie, I got a little much on that side. Let's work that in there. All right, we'll see where that goes. I'm gonna turn this to my angle. Quite enough liquid white up there. We'll work with it. Mm, this is already awesome. It's just amazing what happens when you do this. Excuse me. Works out your wrist a lot. <laughs> end up having a strong wrist after this. Turn it back your way. Keep the dark up at the top if you want to. That's what I'm gonna do.
hard not to have a wobbly table. That's something when you're using a tray table. Darker, darker, darker up at the top here. See, sometimes you get all your strokes going like this direction. Sometimes they're going the other way. The back and forth kind of feathers everything together. That's the idea, especially when you just rub it. <laughs> you can tell it's been a while since I painted. You've got that wrist strength. So now on the bottom, we're going to come straight across. You get a lot more paint than that, but you can see already we got a sky going, and then we'll have the water down here. <clears throat> and this is all just the same phthalo blue color. It was very oily, not very much thick paint on there, which is just fine for me. Try to get the bottom of the canvas, make it the darkest down there. Yeah. To the middle of the easel. And make the distance kind of I feel like the shimmer widens, does kind of a circle thing because of the light. Whatever you want it to be, though, you can cover the whole thing with blue if you wanted. And the more brushing you do, the more color you'll put on and the smoother finish, it'll be less grainy. Than this. And this will not work well at all if you don't have the liquid white on there. It's an oily surface that we're working with. Get your finger all white. So it's blending the oily white with the blue if you don't know anything about Bob Ross. And the wet on wet painting method. Oh, see, that was like a downward angle. Wipe it. The faster the better. No fear. Remember, that's our lesson. Lesson today is painting without fear. You have to twist it like this sometimes, at least I do, so I can get the right angles. You may not have the ability to twist your easel so easily. 
but I like to do it. I connect the back a little bit. Alright, just come across all of it as light as you can. Blend this in a bit more without ruining any of your beautiful areas. What do you think? I think that's good. I think we're ready for some clouds. Little cloud guys, we're gonna get titanium white with the man. And then just put a little pile on the opposite side. Opposite side. Conservative with my paint, the paint conservationist, conservationist. <laughs> now, so clouds can be done a few different ways. But I like the fan brush clouds. So what we're gonna do here, this is a pile of white. This is just old nothingness. It shows through the wax paper that we got going, but white here. Great thing about this paint is you can hold it sideways like this. And hopefully it doesn't fall off on your floor. <laughs> Something I was thinking about recently is the thicker. So if I take a thick old blob on there, and I just load the corner, if I take a thick blob on there and leave the thickness of the paint, it'll make it look more like a foreground cloud. If there's that texture, you see, maybe? And then the ones without texture would be more background clouds. We'll see. Let's see what we get. Oh, that's a big old string of paint there. <laughs> Sometimes I just put it on and then kind of give it some swirls. Make some big old thunderheads coming out from, whoops, just move fast. Once you get it in there, don't spend too much time on the same spot. Mm, beautiful. The accidental nature of this is the key. I find when I try to paint specific things, it's much less satisfying. And just letting the accidental nature of it flow. Mm, it's like the eye of the cloud. <laughs> one. Right up here. Yeah. Just kind of be crazy all over the place with it. And I really press it to get that paint out of there. Make some floaters on here. Mm -hmm. Some fluffy little wisps, wispy clouds. Definitely. 
barely tell the formation of it, which is cool. I'm just going to scrub some of the around the cap. Oh, yeah. Went along just fine. It's easy, too. That's the great thing about this. All right, where do we want to just... Uh, You guys going on. Now that I've got paint across the entire brush, I'm gonna do some more some flat. A lot of this will probably be covered up by mountains. Which is just fine. Right there. Mm. Perfect. All right, now that we've got this, you know, we're in the bottom of that just a bit. There we go. We're gonna go over to a clean brush, which I'm gonna have to walk over there to get on, so just a sec. This one and this. All right. <clears throat> now that we got a clean brush, it doesn't look clean, but it's just been stained with paint, and actually I let paint dry into it. But I'm pretty proud of the job that I did getting. This thing was bone solid, and I soaked it in the paint thinner. And kept scrubbing it on the, you know, the little brush rack in the bucket. And whew, I got it back to pretty dang decent. <laughs> Usable, that's for sure. Now let's see how it does. So we got to just fluff these clouds. Just. As light as you possibly can. You don't want to ruin your beautiful shapes. Mm. Just even lighter. Careful, careful. Technically, you're supposed to start at the top and work your way down. for the purpose of um, layering, three-dimensional layering. See, I kind of smeared that one out. Looks like it's flowing in the wind. Get some gusts going on. Get the hair off of there. So then these guys down here just come across in a couple turns. Fades around. And this bottom of this, we're just going to soften it up. Want these guys. Faster the better. You also want to be careful though. Get a good fluff. Yeah, there we go. So your brush kind of gets a little color on it. Not much at all. Though. Use the corner. Soften the bottom of all of this. That's a beautiful set of clouds, if you ask me. I think we'll leave it just like that. 
Now, do ourselves some mountains, some mountains. Let's see what kind of time we got. Oh, it doesn't say. Hmm, that's okay. See, no fear, don't worry. Just keep on going. That's pretty damn beautiful now. Now, we're gonna need our handy dandy palette knife and some lizard and crimson. We're gonna mix the crimson. with the blue. Yeah. Sometimes these things get tough to open. Real tough. So I'm gonna set the crimson on the palette here, right next to the blue. Ooh, it's squeezing some oil out. It's okay. I can use paper towels. So. Pad or just, you know, soak up that oil, or maybe we'll just use it. So, this is a interesting, I'm definitely gonna need more paint, but I'm just gonna mix these two colors right together. It's a beautiful mixture that happens. Just or you could say it looks gross either way. I think it creates a beautiful color. And then you smash it down, wipe off your knife, and we'll see what we can do with just that little tiny amount of paint. We'll see how much more we need. But I'm gonna need a paper towel. There's one down here. Always keep your paper towels handy. That's certainly necessary. I usually will stick one underneath right in this area, just so you can always go whoosh, wipe it off. Maybe we'll do that. I can safely. There we go. There we go. All right. Let's see what happens here. Keep ourselves a little bit of this color. Barely any on the tip of the knife there. And where do we want our mounts today? Mm. Just want like a centered one. Its peak is gonna be like right up here. So there we go. That's a good, good looking shape. Mm. And you can start to see the purple once it mixes with the white on there. It's real beautiful. Another little peak there. Say it comes down this way. And during this particular step here, all you're worried about is the fine edge. Once you've got your fine edge in there, everything else takes care of itself later. Get rid of the excess paint, scrape it down. You can see the colors starting to blend, which is beautiful. Maybe we'll have another more of a flat peak over there. We'll be like, oh, that was a lot. Yeah, we'll use it anyways. Maybe some flatness to this peak here. Yeah.
Kind of a jagged, jagged guy over there. Wow, it looks different. Looks different on the camera. But that's cool with me. Okay, I want one more little something going on right there. And this will disappear behind trees into the background. Now, now that we've got our color laid out here. Fill in a little bit in this area. It's where it become misty. All right. Then take your blender brush. Take my blue brush from the sky. Just kind of wipe it on the paper towel real quick. Get as much blue as I can out of it. So I don't have to go through the process of washing the brush. Now, I'm going to take the mountain and smear it down. Being very careful not to ruin our top edges. Soft into the distance, and softer at the bottom. And think of the way, like the peak goes. This one goes that way. Make little noises. Like you're making mountains, moving mountains. You can move mountains. You have the power to do all the things that I can do, and even greater things we will do. Oh, see, I kind of softened that edge there. I'm trying to seem to see that. And right here in the middle, it's kind of hard to decide which direction. Well, I like that, maybe it comes out that way. Soften it, soft. Nice and soft. Ooh. And that's a mountain. Now, once you've got your mountain pulled out, softened, Bring it down a little lower. It's a windy day out there today. I'll tell you what. Maybe it's time to switch to some tavern music. What do you think? Give that a try. This is our misty valley. That's where our misty valley is going to be. So now, a little more titanium white. Um, a little on your fingers every now and then. Just wipe it on your paper towel or your pants, whichever. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to do just what we did to make the piece, but with white. And we're going to say the light's coming from this direction. So this little peak in the back here, just getting some light on it. Like, then I should clean the knife because the color 
You see the blacks mixed with the white already. But I'm going to break the rules and just lay in the snow there. Get another roll. Maybe. It's just at the top there. Yeah, I like that. I like to make little noises. You want to be soft, almost dropping the knife without dropping the knife. <laughs> Another roll, check out this peak. Boom. Boom. There we go. Just like that, literally. It's incredible. Unbelievable. You can make thicknesses and crevices. Valleys. So I took just a dash of blue, mixed it with the white, so I can get a light blue color. So I can use this light blue color to make shadows. So let's try to do a shadow. I get the right angle here. Mm, not quite blue. Enough. Try that. And it kind of went purple there. I don't know if I like that. Probably gonna need to put out some more paint there, but oh yeah, that's nice. Oh. Mm. You see, it puts a shadow behind the back side of the peak. But I'm gonna drop out just a touch more of that thin little blue. Just literally a tap on the palette to work with. We'll be needing more soon anyways. Oh yeah, that'll be much more noticeable, exciting. And the back side of this mountain. Got some of the white there. That's okay. It's always fixable. This guy is so off into the distance here. He's gonna kind of be more of a grayish of this song.
Nice. That's pretty bad. All right. Do a little touch up on the white. This peak over here. Mm. This one up there. And white down to the bottom. Check this out. I do some cool here. Whole nother peak. Give us some darkness. as part of its existence, which is necessary in all things. It's a fascinating subject, the necessity of duality, the paradoxical nature of duality. Light, dark, life, but key to that is the color. So, once I get that blue in there, oh yeah, there we go. All right. And I just blend that out into whiteness. I'm there. And then we're going to fluff our mountain. How do you fluff a mountain, you ask? Well, you've come to the right place. Because we can fluff a mountain. So you just. Downward presses on the bristles. See how misty? Misty mountains. All right. Then you do the upward lift the exact same direction as the peaks. So you got like wind riding up your valleys. Some of these phrases are pretty funny, actually. Nice. Mm. Love that. Look right there. Let's give this guy a little wind up there. Nice. Give that guy a little touch. Well, I think we are rocking. White bar. Oh. 
I think that's a perfect time to take a little break real quick and stand back. It's important when you're painting to stand back to at least six feet and take a look at it. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. And then we'll be back to finish, add some trees. So let me get the example and show you what we're going for. So we're here on the wall. So this is the direction we're heading. Go for something like that. Maybe we'll set it over here. All righty. Okay, got that fan brush. And I got some sap green over here on the pile. I'm gonna mix it right with the crimson and the blue. And we're gonna see what we come up with. Looks interesting. Dark green. Yeah. Now, fix this thing so I can spin it. There. So we want to do the tiniest trees back here. Real tiny. Something like that. Except we're gonna need more paint on the brush. Okay. I have to put down some more paint. <clears throat> yeah. Let's just keep going, see what we can do. Let's just keep on going. See, then this one get a little bigger. Start actually having some. Let's 
some sub green going. A little bit of stain low blue. Blue is super powerful, so gotta be careful with that. Right. And it just gets bigger over here. Start having trees that actually um, So anyways, sometimes you just get carried away doing stuff and it's fun. And then I'm gonna make a couple more distant trees, like this one, a little bit there. Yeah, that's a good tree there. Mm. We'll do like one more of those guys. A little taller. He can be in his body. Nice. Just do like that in the water. Yeah, we'll do some more trees, you know, wherever you want. Same thing over here, just gets taller and taller. So that's the furthest point back.
This is how we build a forest. <laughs> Maybe there's a little, little one back there. You guys got some branches. Reflected in the water. I think we'll work with something like that. Yeah, that's good. Now, we're going to need to do Take our blue brush from earlier. Yeah. It's actually got some of the mountain color still in it. That'll be cool to add to the reflection as well. We're gonna choose our water line. Way back here. And pull down. Boom. Fascinating. It's hard to get it to match perfectly, but man, it's beautiful. Now, now that we got ourselves a forest going on there, we gotta cut ourselves in a water line. Yeah, we're gonna need some liquid white for that. Yeah, or we could just do it. Let's just do it with maybe a little. Maybe a little bit. Take one blue. One blue. Swing. Sometimes you get your hands hands full. Now, should I put land? Maybe only up here, further up. We can do that first. Before we do the water line, so I'm gonna have to get some land color. Yeah. Some land color we got here. So burnt umber. 
burnt umber, which I believe is ooh, some sort of a brown. Ourselves a little bit to work with there. These 1980 gamblins aren't bad at all. Now, I'm gonna grab a little bit of titanium white, mix it with that brown. Hopefully that will give us an earthy color. Oh, we'll see what we do with that. It's kind of white. It's cool though. Nice. That does add, that does add a touch to it. Sweet. Yeah, had some significances there. Um, excellent. Now we've got our land in there. <clears throat> Water lines, slicing in there. Wipe the knife up. Come back again for another attack. And you can do some little
Then with your clean brush ever so softly. Ding. All right. Now we've got ourselves a pretty awesome landscape going here. I think. I think we'll do a tree up here. And then the path, which side? You gotta have a path on this side over here. So this side will be a middle ground. It'll be a blue or green, blue or green color. So, I'm going to take our palette here. This is the blue that I mixed with the green, and then I kind of blended it back into the green back here. Here's our earth color down here, then our liquid white, which I'm glad didn't drip off onto my arm, and then our mountain colors we use down here. So I'm going to take some of that blue-green Oh, that was a huge pile. And put a little Prussian blue there. Just to really, these are going to be really blue trees up close. Be a bit greener further away. Yeah, there we go. Now, first we got to decide. Okay. We want this side probably. Yeah, that's what we're doing. So, he's got to be a bigger tree too. Oh, like that. Sharpen the brush once more. Just start working our way down. Pressing harder and harder. And we'll reload down here at the bottom. real darkness to walk off. So then we're gonna create where our land, maybe this tree actually continues to go down to like right here. Maybe there's some nice greens in that brush. We can use that. And our land area here. We'll have that come out to about there. Land in the shadows here. For another guy, let's get up here. Oh, oh wow. Now 
Nice. Liking it. Liking it. Now, we're going to make one more tall guy here. At this point, it's just all trees in the corner there. Nice. Boom. Middle ground. Middle ground. Yeah, and I kind of like that you can see through there. Sometimes you can cover it up with the same background color. Like there's trees back there. But I kind of like it. Like that? Now. Just real quick. We're gonna run some sticks. Fine touches, you know, just we will be adding highlights back here. Dun, 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 dun. Back to our pull downs. Maybe I need a little more color right there. A paint. Thank you. 
kind of a weird part there. Maybe, maybe that fixed it. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Mm. Coming out just fine. While we're at it, we'll toss a couple tree trunks in there. I really know where the whole trunk is. Just kind of some color here and there. Nice. A little bit down there. Yeah. It doesn't stand out much, but in real life here, or if I had it, 50 times better camera, it would make a heck of a difference. Now we're gonna put some land in. So I think that's the way to go at this point. go make the land feel like it's coming further down on the canvas there mm. that's a nice look Little bits of white, <clears throat> the light's shining. Yeah, there we go. That's looking pretty nice. Pretty nice. <laughs> oh. All right, now back to the water lines. Cut some of them babies in there. Always like to work my way back from the back to the closest point. Uh oh. It's just amazing what you can do. It's been a while since I painted, but man, this is a fun one. Oh, um, maybe that's a little bit. Yeah, like it.
right. Now, back to our fan brush. All this green up in here with the Prussian blue. I'm going to start like right here. And this one's coming all the way down. I think I might even add a touch of, yeah, do a touch of Prussian blue. Again, because we're using all the color here left on the palette, pretty much. As the music gets intense. One, it's kind of weird, too rounded down there, but that shit's fine. We can fix that up real fast. Let's get him a friend. So then, down here, we're gonna make ourselves a little path, I think. So I wanna have one more tree. It makes you feel like there's just a forest way back in here. Have this path like you do, 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 do. That comes down from there this way down to like right here. And the whole rest of this just becomes bushes.
Mm. Sí. Almost a full landscape. Now. Now. I think we'll come back here shortly. Finish in the bushes, the path. And we'll do some highlights and a few more tree trunks. And then we'll be good.